Hi, my name is Dr. Madeline Sterling, and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at Weill Cornell. I'm a practicing primary care physician and a health services researcher, and I'm chair of the Primary Care Science Committee, the American Heart Association. And my name is Jeremy Sussman. I am an Associate Professor at the University of Michigan and also a primary care doctor at VA Ann Arbor Healthcare System and Health Services Researcher. I'm the Vice Chair of the American Heart Association's Primary Care Science Committee. We are very excited to be discussing our committee's first scientific statement, the role of primary care in achieving life's essential aid. This statement was written on behalf of the American Heart Association's Primary Care Science Committee, the Council on Quality of Care and Outcomes Research, the Council on Cardiovascular Stroke and Nursing, and Council on Cardiopulmonary Critical Care, Perioperative and Resuscitation, and finally, the Council on Lifestyle and Cardiometabolic Health. Thank you to the American Heart Association for commissioning this work, which we feel is a very important step forward for all people to achieve optimal cardiovascular health. We wrote this statement because we believe there is an urgent need to improve cardiovascular health in the United States. The American Heart Association recognizes life's essential aid as key to achieving this, but I think a lot of work has shown that we have a long way to go. For example, only one in five adults in the U.S. have optimal cardiovascular health, and there are market disparities by socioeconomic status and race and ethnicity. We wrote this statement because we believe that primary care may be one key towards fixing this and truly achieving life's essential aid and cardiovascular health for all. Primary care plays an important role and is truly critical in people's lives in their health and healthcare journeys throughout their lifetime. Our statement not only raises awareness for what primary care is, what our clinicians do, but it also offers evidence for how we as a field can achieve each of the eight components of life's essential eight in practice. The foundation of our scientific statement is a simple premise. A key way to improving cardiovascular health is by achieving life's essential eight. And primary care physicians and other clinicians are key medical providers that can help people achieve life's essential aid. In this paper then, we will examine how primary care can improve life's essential aid, what difficulties primary care is having right now, and how we can improve both primary care and with it life's essential aid in America. Our committee was comprised of a diverse group of primary care physicians and nurses from across the country with interests in cardiovascular disease and in primary care. So let's review what primary care is. In this statement, you will learn that according to the World Health Organization, primary care supports first contact, accessible, continuous, comprehensive, and coordinated person-focused care. It aims to optimize health, ideally should reduce disparities across the population, all at a lower cost, while promoting equal access to care. As shown in figure one of our statement, primary care has five core functions that everyone should know. The first is first contact accessibility, which creates an entry point for care and improves access to health services. The second is continuity, which promotes the development of long-term personal relationships between a person, family, and their healthcare team. The third is comprehensiveness, which ensures that a diverse range of preventative, screening, diagnostic, treatment, rehabilitative, and palliative services are provided. The fourth is coordination, which posits that primary care organization services that provides care across levels across the health system over time and can connect them. And finally, primary care often serves in a very people-centered way. It supports the belief and value that patients should have autonomy over their health decisions and preferences. Most clinicians who practice primary care are trained in family medicine, general internal medicine, or general pediatrics and they are physicians, nurse practitioners, or physician assistants. Other subspecialties may practice primary care, for example, geriatricians and obstetrician gynecologists, which promotes health across the life course. This scientific statement will restrict its scope to primary care prevention in adults. So what is Life's Essential Aid? The American Heart Association recognizes Life's Essential Aid as the most important factors in guiding good cardiovascular health. People who do better on life's essential eight are less likely to develop all forms of cardiovascular disease. As you can see here, the AHA's life's essential eight defines four key health behaviors, diet, physical activity, nicotine use, and sleep, and four health factors, body mass index, blood lipids, which is cholesterol levels, 
blood glucose, and blood pressure, as all being critical to achieving cardiovascular health. Yet, significant gaps persist in the identification, treatment, and control of all eight of these factors. Thanks, Jeremy. I think what's important to realize is that every measure in Life's Essential 8 is modifiable with behavior change or medication management. And these are things that primary care is really good at doing. Because of this, and because of its central role in patient care and healthcare delivery, primary care is ideally positioned to help people achieve optimal cardiovascular health and life's essential eight. As we think through how primary care can be leveraged to achieve life's essential eight, let's think about it through the social ecological model, a commonly used framework that describes how health is influenced across five domains, including individual, interpersonal, organizational and institutional, community, policy, and environment. As you can see here and in the statement, we go into depth on how primary care works across these domains for each of the eight factors. For example, at the interpersonal level, a primary care clinician in practice could provide one-on-one -on -one or interpersonal interaction with the patient to help screen them, their blood pressure, or counsel them on weight and physical activity. Versus at the organizational level, primary care often coordinates care with multiple subspecialties, including cardiologists or endocrinologists, allied health professionals like dietitians, and also other social services, including social workers, or in the community like community health workers or home health aides. Primary care often leads community health organizations and can also influence policy. Of course, the most direct effects of primary care on life's essential aid are through medical care. A quarter of cardiovascular deaths in the U.S. could be avoided by addressing modifiable risk factors with health behavior changes and with medications. Recent national data from the Medical Expenditure Panel Survey shows that primary care clinicians, as opposed to subspecialists such as cardiologists and endocrinologists, are responsible for the large majority of the care that directly relates to life essential aid, including screening, diagnosing, and treating blood pressure, cold glucose, and cholesterol. Additionally, screening for and counseling on smoking cessation and weight gain are far more often provided in primary care than in other settings. Let's look at some examples. As you can see here, primary care provides prevention and treatment opportunities for all of life's essential aid. In the scientific statement, we go into depth and offer key evidence for how each of life's essential aid can improve when primary care clinics and clinicians are key partners. One other value of primary care is its ability to reach vulnerable populations. We go through this in the statement. As is well known, tragic disparities by race and ethnicity persist across many of life's essential aid factors. For example, underrepresented minorities have much higher rates of diabetes and high blood pressure. While these issues have many causes, there is evidence that access to primary care services could help lessen them. Greater supplies of primary care physicians have been associated with smaller racial disparities in both healthcare costs and mortality. Similarly, access to care for rural Americans is a tremendous struggle. Rural residents have higher rates of cardiovascular disease and worse measures on life's essential aid. They also have less access to primary care providers who could help address these problems. Primary care is also the first entry point to America's mental health care system, with the ability to screen for mental health problems, provide medication treatment, and to refer for therapy and advanced evaluations. Despite its benefits, I think it's really important that we also talk about the challenges that primary care faces that limit its potential. The first thing is, as a field, primary care is undervalued and under-resourced. We account for 35% of healthcare visits, but only 5% of healthcare expenditures. Additionally, the workforce pipeline is shrinking, and this is a real problem in the years ahead. Current challenges that we go over in the statement include lack of access to care, burnout, difficulties with care coordination, and lack of sufficient support, including reimbursement. We hope you read this statement and partner with us moving forward. The take home message is that these challenges make it harder for patients to access primary care. And we know that when they do, their health improves. It makes it harder with these challenges for primary care clinicians to provide that whole person care, which we know is important for outcomes. In our scientific statement, we offer some tangible ways to address these challenges to help primary care thrive and in turn, improve cardiovascular health for all. 
It's widely agreed that payment reform is necessary to support effective primary care. Primary care clinicians are among the lowest paid in the U.S. Furthermore, current payment models primarily focus on delivering reimbursable services centered around single disease processes or in-hospital care and procedures, as opposed to the team-based whole person care and cognitive-based care that is the core of outpatient primary care. Effective support of primary care would require increasing the overall portion of healthcare spending to primary care and modernizing how the services are paid. Some worthwhile attempts of these changes have been made, including the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services Medical Home Projects, changes in the physician fee schedule, and the new Making Care Primary Program. Though these are all small relative to the size of the problem. Another key intervention would be greater active support for team-based care. Promoting life's essential aid in primary care will need to involve an array of healthcare professionals and promote collaborative team-based care through both local initiatives and broader national policies. For example, medical assistants and nurses often test for tobacco use status and measure weight, height, and blood pressure. They can perform point-of-care glucose testing and administer dietary and physical activity questionnaires. Other key clinicians in primary care team include dietitians, social workers, pharmacists, and behavioral health teams, all of whom support cardiovascular health. Outside of the clinic, community-based professionals, such as home health aides and attendants, community health workers, and peer coaches are increasingly proving effective at helping patients improve health behaviors and avoid unnecessary health care utilization. Multi-level, team-based, systems-informed approaches to primary care exist and could be expanded to great effect. I think technology will also play an important role in the years to come. We already know what technology is doing for the healthcare in our country. But I think important for primary care is making sure that technology works with our providers and doesn't add to clinical burden. There's so much information that we're able to capture in clinical encounters, and if that could be used to leverage, for example, sharing information across specialties and also making sure that patients can actually access it, I think these things would help us achieve greater cardiovascular health. And finally, a fuller adoption of lessons from implementation science are needed. Implementation science is the study of methods to promote the equitable and systematic uptake of evidence-based interventions into healthcare practice and policy. Implementation science studies are still emerging, but very early science suggests that they may be truly impressive in what they can deliver for primary care and cardiovascular health across urban, rural, and other hard-to-reach populations. Jeremy, if you think back to the process of writing this statement, was there anything that surprised you with, with either the process or our group or maybe what we found? Yeah, I think one thing was just the pure range of options and opportunities we saw for understanding the role primary care could and does play. I tend to think about things like, are you doing the screening? Are you getting the right medications? But primary care is also central to organizing outpatient care things like um, coordinating care with other providers, both uh, cardiologists and endocrinologists, but also dietitians, nutritionists, and home health care workers. The, the, the reach of primary care really ends up incredibly broad, and that didn't become clear until we started trying to figure out the different things that should and shouldn't be included in this paper. I think also one thing that really struck me was just how our writing group was very diverse in practice. So we had members from rural communities, we had nurse practitioners in the field, we have family medicine physicians, we have primary care doctors, we have general internists. And at the end of the day, a lot of us do the very same thing. And so I think it's important to think through, you know, there are an array of primary care clinicians who are all working to help people achieve better health, and many of whom would very much welcome uh, conversations and coordinated care with subspecialists. Uh, we have very much the same goals. And so I think moving forward, we really hope that this statement catalyzes not only awareness, but change and, um, you know, hopefully elicits a desire for true partnership and also policies that can support us uh, to, to help us do what we do best, which is, I think, working with patients and, and actually counseling on behavior change and prescribing medications to help improve their cardiovascular health. Throughout the statement, we hope that you will read and learn that primary care has the potential to provide whole person, integrated, accessible, and equitable health care that addresses most health needs. Primary care can effectively identify and treat life's essential aid behaviors and factors. It's well poised to have an impact on populations affected most by the disparities in cardiovascular health. 
However, for primary care to have maximum impact on life's essential aid, it must be supported, promoted, and valued by the healthcare community, public health system, and policymakers. Additionally, partnerships between primary care and other key clinicians are key for implementing guidelines and improving uptake of life's essential aid for all individuals and communities. We would like to thank our writing committee for all of their efforts in moving this forward, as well as the American Heart Association for commissioning this work. We look forward to continuing the dialogue with you and happy reading. Thank you.